kthoradio.com, log on there and get the latest weather conditions and find out about any road restrictions with our link to tahoeroads.com. And of course, we, we don't have any restrictions no, right now. we are unrestricted. So, yes, exactly. It is 8.35. You're listening to K Tahoe. It's time for your Mountain Resort Report with the guy from Tahoe, Curtis Fall. Good morning, Curtis. Good morning. It is 8.48. You're listening to K Tahoe and your weekday wake-up crew. Dan, give a holler. I'm here. He's here. <laughs> I'm Jen. We have got our next set of guests in from the Tahoe Figure Skating Club. And uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about a special event that's coming up next week that celebrates figure skating. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've got Deirdre Fagre. You've been in before. Yeah. We've seen you a few times. That's good. And you're leaving soon, right? April. April. Why did I think it was February? I thought it was February too. I don't know. We don't know. We're we don't know anything. We're, we're getting old. And Joni Malarchuk, your coach. Yes, one of our coaches. One of our coaches. One of our coaches. All right. Tell us what's going on. Well, there's a film called Rise, and it's showing on February 17th, next Thursday. Um, they have designated theaters. The designated theater for us is the Sierra One in Reno. What this is, it's um, a film celebrating the American figure skating, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the 1961 U.S. World Figure Skating Team that perished in a plane crash. They were on their way to the World Championships in Prague, Czechoslovakia. And then what's interesting to me is that, um, for those of who, who remember or maybe don't, 1960, the Olympics were right here in Tahoe at Squaw Valley. So were a lot of those skaters, skaters that, that either won or competed at Squaw Valley that yeah. year before the Olympics? And I'm, you know, wasn't there, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the coaches were there, all the U.S., you know, the whole U.S. team was there. Everybody was competing. You know, we had a lot of up-and-coming skaters, and um, when all these skaters and coaches perish, the U.S. was kind of left at a lull with nothing. We've got, we had some more kids coming up, and there was no way around really to teach them. That would be a problem. <laughs> that would be a problem, no coaches. Yeah. And so then Peggy Fleming, when she was younger. She was younger, even though she looks fabulous, might I add. Yeah. Um, I love Peggy Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> she looks great. Um, and, uh, when you hear about when she skated in the 60s, it's like, whoa, it's disconnected yeah. because she really looks good. Um, so she was one of the skaters that kind of followed up after after this the key group. It was the top skaters. Yes. We talked about nationals. If you if you watched on NBC weekend before last, you got yeah. to see the U.S. championships, and um, so it was kind of that yeah that modern day group yeah. was what we would have lost yeah. back in 1961. Yeah. So so what the U.S. figure skating. USFSA did is they started recruiting coaches and they kind of looked outside the United States um, because we had our next group up and coming because we wanted to make it to worlds and you know nationals the next year so we recruited coaches outside one of the coaches that perished in the crash was um, Maribel Vincent um, she, one of her students was Frank Carroll who actually one of our coaches Garnett Fiordalisi took from for many, many, many years. So there's kind of that trickle-down effect of how that's affecting us. And then one of the coaches that was recruited directly from overseas was um, John Nix. And he was my direct coach. I took from him throughout my whole career. And he was the coach of Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner, JoJo Starbuck, Ken Shelley, and most recently, Sasha Cohen. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of how it affects us, and now we, without even knowing, our parents got involved with these coaches, not really knowing the history. We learned about the history, and now we're carrying on the legacy to our students. You know, we teach Deirdre the same, you know, philosophy that they had. We're carrying it on down even further. You know, I read an article um, just this last month about Frank Carroll and how, and what, it, and it really is, he took his, his coaching style and techniques from I, was it Maribel Vincent? I think was, Vincent, yeah, was yes. his coach, and and so it really has carried on yes. because he was coached by her and then began coaching and has obviously had a great career. Yeah, um, is still having a great career. Still coaching. having a great career. He, had, he has Evan Lysacek right now, so he's still doing wonderful. And didn't and Evan Lysacek just won the what U.S. Olympic Committee's Male Athlete of the Year or something? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. I just uh -huh. saw that somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where, but. 
know these things. So that's, that's really cool. Now, so people understand what U.S. figure skating is. I kind of compare it to, uh, we just had the Super Bowl. So the U.S. Figure Skating Association is kind of like the NFL. Yes. So if you're going to be competing and be on TV and be in the Olympics, you need to be a member of the U.S. Figure Skating Association. Yes. And can you do that as an individual and through a club? or how does You can do that as an individual or through a club. It's kind of like, yeah, like the NHL, the NFL. You can um, just belong directly to the United States Figure Skating Association. You do an individual membership. Or you can belong through a club as we have here, the Tahoe Figure Skating Club. And what that does is that allows you to test in their testing structure. It allows you to compete. Um, it's just a membership that allows you to be an amateur athlete and compete in all these competitions and possibly make it to nationals as we saw last week on TV and be on the world team someday. Or as Deidre is, she's, um, she belongs to the Tahoe Figure Skating Club. Um, she has dual citizenship. So she's going to be trying to compete for Ireland. And I was talking to your mom about that the other day because it's interesting to see how different countries you'll see represent, you know, great representation yeah. from certain countries and not so much from other countries. So right. That's cool that you have the dual citizenship. I like that. <laughs> I know. Do I have any other citizenships? No, no okay. I don't. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Now, also. Um, Talking about coaching, we talked, you know, about how, how the U.S. lost their coaches, they brought coaches in, and how now we have, you know, a generation of coaches who have trained under them and carried on this legacy. Um, as far as coaching goes, and this was, I, I just learned this recently, in order for, for skaters to go on to these different competitions and different levels, they need to have coaches who are trained and certified and yeah, able to take them. What? How does that work a little bit? Well, and these are all new new rules and everything within the last five or ten years. But in order to, you have to be a member of the USFSA. You have to be a member of the PSA, Professional Skaters Association. You have to carry a category certification. And there's different ones. There's A, B, and C. You have to have a category A certification through the USFSA, which says that you have um, coaching credentials, you know what you're talking about, and it, that allows you to take a student to even take a test. You're not allowed to stand by the boards if you don't have this. You're not allowed to stand by the boards and take a kid to a competition, international competition, or even a regional competition if you don't have these certifications. So those coaches that we see when they come off the ice and they're sitting there for their scores, yeah. they have that certification. They have, they have to have that certification. They're not even going to be allowed to show up at the competition without it. That, so that sounds like, I mean, that's pretty intense. It's not like, I, you know, I hate to, I'm not going to be bad about soccer or AYSO because I like the AYSO <laughs> organization. But basically parents volunteer to coach for those type of things. But that's not how this works yeah. at all. Do kids in Tahoe have that opportunity and that kind of coaching available to them if they were looking at moving on? Are yes. And it's a, I mean, it's a, it, they even have online stuff now. There's, um, if you get on the USFSA and the PSA website, there's um, clinics and seminars you can go to. I mean, most of the coaches, too, nowadays belong to another organization called the PSA, Professional Skaters Association. Mm -hmm. And there's a line of um, test, oral ratings test. It goes all the way from your basic accreditation all the way up to a master level. And I, myself, have the master freestyle rating, and Garnet has the senior freestyle rating. So when you do that, you actually have to have passed all of the tests yourself or you have to have coached a skater through that level, mm -hmm. which Garnet and I have both done the same. And you basically sit in a room of Frank Carroll's, John Nix's, Maribel Vincent's, and they ask you skating questions like, what are the biomechanics of teaching a triple X? <laughs> and you have to explain and know what you're talking about. So. <laughs> I've got that for you. <laughs> so that's kind of what it is. So, you know, we do. I mean, Garden and I do pride ourselves. We spend a lot of time working. We work with the best. I've done apprenticing under John Nix. There were years ago where I would take a group of students and we would go down there for weeks at a time and be on the ice with him. Um, we can have kids and new coaches apprentice under us since I have a master rating. So we do, we, we're proud of what we have and we're very proud to pass it on to our students and your daughter, you know, your daughter skates and it's great to be able to have this knowledge and to teach her this old knowledge, you know, that's for years and years from day one of her stepping on the ice.